Hey everybody, Aaron Blaze here. What day is it? It's Thursday. Thursday. It's Thursday, and today we're gonna animate. I did a little watercolor painting on Tuesday, kind of jumping around from different mediums, having a good time. But this, I've got a. I'm working on this course. For those of you that don't know, I'm working on a new course for my website, uh, CreatureArtTeacher.com, uh, on acting for animation. And so what I'm doing is a whole series of shots, just animated shots with various lines of dialogue that I've been animating to. And I'm going to, during the course, I'm going to talk about how I animated them, what I'm thinking about in the acting, all that goes into it. And so I'm doing a new one today, which I kind of like. And uh, it's a little morbid, but it's kind of fun. And uh, and so I'm going to play that for you guys in just a little bit. But... Um, one thing I want to mention, oh, hold on one second, I'm turning off something on here. There we go. One thing I want to mention is that uh, today, for today only, uh, my digital painting course is on sale at 45% off. So go check that out at CreatureArtTeacher.com. My digital painting course is 45% off today. And, uh, and that's a good deal. Uh, but as usual, I've got Dustin here. Say hi, Dustin. Hi, everybody. <laughs> we got the new camera set up for him, so it's working out good. And, uh, and as usual, we've got Nick in Sarasota, and he's going to be answering questions. And we'll just have a good time today. So I got, I got food in my teeth. I just finished eating my lunch really fast, like two minutes before we sat down. By the way, you look a little low on the camera. Maybe want to... How's this? Is that better? <laughs> How's that? Oh, that looks great. Is that great? How's that it really look? shows up your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Is that beta? That's beta. Okay, good. So, um, without further ado, I got, I got I got broccoli stuck in my teeth. Without further ado, I am going to play for you uh, a piece of dialogue. Now, what I've been doing, like I said, uh, I've been animating all these different shots, and what I've been doing to find the dialogue, I've just been looking up really good literary quotes. That's all it is. And I find quotes that I like, and... Um, and then I record it. And this one I just kind of put on a voice. And then I recorded it. And uh, I record it on my phone. My phone has a digital recorder, which most cell phones have now. So it's nice and clean. And then I upload it into TV Paint. That's the software that I'm going to be using today. Go ahead and show the... Are you on the desktop? Yeah. Yeah, so um, I'm going to be working in TV Paint. Here's a vulture. Um, there's a vulture character that I'm going to be... Uh, I'm going to turn that off too. There's a vulture character that I'm animating. But this is TV Paint, which is hand-drawn. It's a software for hand-drawn uh, um, animation, to, like we used to do back in the old days at Disney, uh, except it's digital. I'm doing it on my Cintiq 27-inch uh, QHD, and so, but made by Wacom. So that's all my equipment. Uh, I draw. I go. Actually, do you have the over the shoulder? I'll do that. Yep. So here is my Cintiq right here. And uh, I draw on this, the software is TV Paint, and I'm going to go ahead and play for you the dialogue I recorded. The, 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 the piece of literature I found, found uh, and it was from uh, To Kill a Mockingbird. Uh, it's, you never can fully understand a person until you, can, until you consider their point of view. I mean, you have to really get inside their skin and walk around in it a little bit. And so I thought, you know what, that's kind of fun. Because I thought about a vulture, and what if a vulture kind of did that literally? And and so I just thought it could be kind of fun. So I want to, I'm, I'm, I'll play for you the dialogue I've got right here. I'm going to put it on the speaker. You know, you never really can understand a person until you consider things from their point of view. I mean, listen. You gotta really climb inside their skin and you know walk around in it a little bit. I'm, I'm eating in order to make it. That's what you know. You never really can understand a person until you consider things from their point of view. I mean, listen. You gotta really climb inside their skin and you know walk around in it a little bit. Okay, so there's the dialogue. You know. Let me stop that. So there's the dialogue. And so I spent a couple of days just thinking about it, thumbnailing out. Remember, thumbnails are the little sketches. I did a whole bunch of little drawings. Um, 
And once I got an idea for what I wanted to do, I went ahead and did my scribble pass. We always do in our process, at least in my process, I always do what's called a scribble pass. I get an idea for what I want to animate first through thumbnails, and then I scribble through it really fast. I don't worry about mouth shapes for dialogue. I'm just trying to get the action of how this character is going to be acting. And in this case, I wanted to do something a little broader where he's moving around a little bit more. And so I'll show you what that looks like. So first of all, here's his buddy listening to what he's saying. Here's the ribs of a carcass that they're feeding off of. And then here is our little buddy, and I'll go ahead and play it for you now. You know, you never really can understand a person until you consider things from their point of view. I mean, listen, you gotta really climb inside their skin and, you know, walk around in it a little bit. So that's it right there. You know, you never really can understand a person until you consider things from their point of view. I mean, listen, you gotta really climb inside their skin and, you know, walk around in it a little bit. So that's that's it. It's a little morbid, but I thought it was fun. And I wanted to use a prop, and I wanted him to kind of literally be doing what he's saying. Um, and I just thought it would be fun to do this with a vulture. So now that I've done this scribble pass, now what I want to do is I'm going to keep going with the scribbles, but I'm, go, I'm going to go through and now I'm going to think about mouth shapes and dialogue. And that's what I'm going to focus on with you guys today while I answer questions and we talk about life and we talk about the old days. Life. Dustin wakes up because Dustin's a little hungover today. I but he's the only one. <laughs> <laughs> but see, I can be perky. I'm perky. <laughs> <laughs> Dustin went out last night and did a little karaoke. Uh huh. <laughs> so, so I'm gonna do work on this. I'm gonna turn the volume down a little bit so it's not overpowering. But uh, do we have any questions? Uh, did you make your dual monitor setup? Oh yeah. Go back. Go back to the over my shoulder. Yes. So this this is really cool because this rotates as you can see. So I can rotate it anywhere I went, and I just I went out and bought a 4K monitor, and I just built a box to fit it, and I've got these little arms here, and behind my Cintiq, I've got a stand behind that. My Cintiq is resting on that as well, and it all kind of works together. It's kind of cool. Actually, I want to make sure this doesn't fall off. Yeah, we're good, because <laughs> I turned it a little bit. Sure. But uh, yeah, so that's my that's my setup. Nice. So, uh, what is the second best animation software you would use? The second best? The second best. You know what, I, I, I really don't, anything. yeah, I don't know, because I don't use it, I've never used anything, well, I, I, I've used other software, but it was, it's not second best, it was, well, I mean, it, was, it just doesn't compare to TV Paint. There was, there was a, a free software that I, when I first started to animate on my, on my screen, on my tablet, on my pen display, uh, it's called um, uh, Pencil. It was just it's just called Pencil, and it's free animation software you can download. It's it it's okay. It does what it's supposed to do, and I was able to animate with it. Um, Toon Boom is out there, but I've never used Toon Boom. Toon Boom is probably you know there's TV Paint, and there's Toon Boom, and they they both kind of have the market, uh, but I've never used Toon Boom. I've only used TV Paint, so I can't really speak to Toon Boom. Yeah. Yeah. Unrelated, but have you ever been to Idaho? Yes. Uh, I was in Idaho this summer. Very briefly, I kind of went from Montana into Idaho and back into Montana again. Is that Nick on the upper monitor? Hey, that is Nick on the upper monitor. In deep thought. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going a little bit broader in the uh, where he's going, you know... And I want all this food. He's got like pieces of meat and hide and stuff kind of f dangling out of his mouth. I got to get all that working right too. Making sure the overlap on it is working right. There's the oo for o. See, with this, I'm mainly going to be doing open, whoops, open and closed mouths. Um, because open and closed mouths, because he's going to have a mouthful of food, 
Um, I'm not going to be able to get real subtle mouth shapes, but it's okay to just, like I can do for ooh, I can just like push his cheeks out and keep his mouth closed. You know, and TV Paint you is know, uh, for Mac and Windows, correct? It is, yes. You know, TV Paint is for both Mac and Windows. <coughs> so here he's swallowing. See, he takes a big gulp. Mm -hmm. Swallows, take another, and then he says, starts shaking his head. Ah, ah, ah. There's that, nah, you know, open mouth. Stand. Right there, I'm going to open his mouth right there. Go ahead, Dustin. All right. Uh, YouTube question that Nick has relayed to us. Oh. Um, would studying motion design be a good way to get into cinematic animation? Is that the one? Yes. Would studying motion design be a good way to get into cinematic anima animation? If by, if by cinematic animation you mean what I'm doing right now, um, it could. It, the principles of motion design are a little bit different. Um, but it, it the answer is it could, not necessarily, but it could. If you're talking about going into motion design at a school or something like that, I would see if you could go a little bit more specific and get into animation itself. Because motion design is a, it's not necessarily character animation. No, it's not character animation. It's something completely different. Ready for another? Yeah, baby. Shoot. Lay it on me. Is the bird eating scar? <laughs> Yes, he is eating Scar. This is a little piece of Scar's entrails right here. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Have you heard of um, uh, tonic DNA? Tonic DNA. T O N I C K tonic. Oh. DNA. No. <laughs> this is a P for person, so I'm going to get a nice strong P in here. I'm going to get a nice strong P in here, okay? Okay. <laughs> go ahead. Uh, have you ever been to Australia? And if not, would you go? I'd go in a heartbeat. That's one of the few places I haven't been. I mean, there's a lot of places I haven't been, but that's a region of the world I haven't been. As close as I've ever gotten, I would say, is Singapore. That's as close as I've gotten to, to uh, Australia. So, yes, absolutely. It's very high on our list to get there, Nick and I and, and Dustin. That would be awesome. It would be awesome. I'll let you know the number one place I want to, I still want to go. Japan! Japan! <laughs> now, how long did that uh, base animation take you? Uh, this took me, if you count up, because I was going back and forth, it took about a day. Because it's very scribbly. So you just kind of just rush right through it? Yeah. Until. Until. I'm going to open his mouth a little bit. How are we doing, Dustin? I'm just reading up this uh, extra long question. Oh, gotcha. So I got ah. so I got extra extra long question here. Hold on. Uh oh. You okay, buddy? Hold on. What'd you do? I'm on the wrong layer. The layer switched on me. Air near. Air Okay, um, okay, go ahead. Okay. So it's an extra long one, but in my knowledge, what they do in TV animation is they create a series of pre made uh, mouth shapes so they can reuse again and again to save time and money. As far as I know, there are around eight basic mouth shapes that could achieve this. Do you have any other knowledge or principles or advice? For us who are working in TV like this? 
Well, I mean, working in TV and working in features are really two different things. You have to be super economic in TV because you're on such a tight budget. Now, that's not to say we're not on a tight budget in features and you know, making a film, but we have usually, by and large, a much larger budget to where we can spend more time and therefore more money getting dialogue, getting the nuances of dialogue right, which is why we never use stock mouth shapes so many people talk differently the characters mouths are different obviously there's a lot of the the way a character talks uh varies so dialogue when you really get into the nuances of it is very unique from character to character i'm doing a bird so you know how do you do a hard beak and you know there there's issues right there and so um and i'm not sure if i'm answering your question or not but the thing is we, I would spend, I never use stock mouth shapes. I always draw my mouth shapes per shot, unique, custom, whatever you want to call it, per shot. Now, um, but there are times, like if you're on a tighter budget, yeah, you can just get those to the ooh, ah, uh, tss, you know, all the different, the eight different mouth shapes you're talking about. You know, Family Guy does it. Um, uh, I'm trying to think of another... The Simpsons do it, you know. So when you're on that tight of a budget, then you just you you just switch those mouth shapes out. Now, granted, too, a lot of times if you have the stock mouth shapes in your head, you just draw them and get beyond you know be done with it and move on. I think I I hope I answered your question. So, do you have a uh, timing and spacing methods that you generally use when you're animating? I don't have timing and spacing methods. I really, timing and spacing for me is completely gut. I always just go by my gut. What feels right. Like this, th this whole section in here where he's, he's pulling the meat up and he's swallowing and then he's shaking his head. I animated that whole thing. I went through the action that, that I knew that I was going to have to go through. But then once I was done with that, I really nuanced the timing the heck out of it. I spent probably an hour and a half just sitting here shifting little bits here and there until it finally felt natural to me. Now, I'll have a base in my head of, and, and a feel, but I'm always adjusting and, and just trying to get things to tighten up and, and feel right. And so, so your answer is I don't have a method. It, the method is just working it until it feels right. And that's one of the things I love about TV paint because I can, or working digitally rather than on paper, because I can get this uh, animated and then I can sit here and adjust timing and playback and adjust timing and playback and adjust timing and playback and it's instant. So I can really, I can do nuances very, very quickly, which is very cool. Somebody suggested... Uh... I think Dustin should do the voice of one of your future animation scenes. Maybe something about a lift and a lift. voice recognition <laughs> technology in Schultland. That's very good. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see. I'm right now I'm just getting that little piece of meat. And I'm thinking about it being on eight, so I have to anticipate that there's gonna be a lot of drawings in between. So is there a chance that a 2D animated movie uh, could do well in the box office by today's standards? I heard the Breadwinner film did a good job, 94% in Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah, it did. A, it, it was ranked really well, but financially it didn't do well. It, I don't know that it was really widely released. I don't, I don't think that it ever came here. Mm -hmm. So it's not, there's a difference between being critically acclaimed and being mo a monetary success, a, a financial success. And um, yes, first of all, going back to the beginning of your question, I do think a well-made, great story, 2D animated film done the right way can do well in the box office. Absolutely. And that looks like a uh, new relay from, oh, there we uh, go. from Nick. Okay. And it says, do you think about the structure of the drawing from the beginning or do you go more to the movement of the character? And what advice would you give to maintain the structure of the character? I think of the structure and the movement all at the same time. Okay? I can't think about one without the other. But I think about how that structure is going to morph or change as it's moving. So if it's, if it's a big, broad movement, maybe parts will stretch and then they'll catch up. If it's slow, subtle movement, then that structure is going to stay solid. 
and then it says to maintain uh, what would I, uh, to maintain the structure. When I'm designing characters, when I'm thinking about a character, I think about them in their simplest shapes. What are the simplest shapes to create that character? That's why you know, like a a uh, um, let me draw another layer here, another animation layer. Let's say let me turn these off, that one off, and that one off. You know, if we have a head, I try. You'll always see me. You know, if you have a character that looks like this, maybe like the princesses, usually are their 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 head shapes are like this, and they got their little nose, and their eyes, like so, lips. So there's the princess. I've done very simple shapes, right? And if you think about those simple shapes, then it's easy to then go and maintain structure when you're thinking about different angles. Because here's a new angle for her. Okay, here's her ear. Here's her ears. It's all about making sure that your shapes are simple so that you can construct them simply. You know, what if her eye line is up here? Well, then her chin is going to come like this. There's her ear there. There's her nose, mouth eyes so I, I'm always thinking about simple simple shapes so that like so so that I can turn them in space a lot more and it's much easier to maintain that those shapes so that being said this vulture that I'm working on you know the shape with him is basically this triangle I think about this triangle from the side that has a beak attached like this and the neck comes off like this so there's your shape right there and then the eye that's his shape right there but if I turn him I still in the, in the, sh in the triangle at an angle would be like this okay so if I turn him I think I, I, I really do think in these terms like this and then I let that beak come down and that comes into his mouth his eyes here other eye is there there's the flat side of the triangles this way flat side underneath and there's a mouth so that I can I can turn him in space any way that I want does that make sense I think it makes sense I think so so that's what I think about when I okay, let me get rid of that layer turn those on those back on but when I scribble something out when I'm doing a complete scribble test I don't go through the process of I just I'm literally just scribbling drawings I mean if you look at some of these look at these drawings I'm really just I'm thinking about movement and thrust and you know and I, I'm also thinking about shape all of it they're very sloppy messy drawings just like the food he's eating. Just like the food he's eating. <laughs> so here I'm just going through and kind of looking at that dangling piece of meat. Now watch when he, I'm going to have it kind of swirl around his head when he jumps, when he comes forward through here. When he says, and they consider things from their point of view. point of view. So, He's going to come up and go here. How are you doing, Dustin? You, I, I, don't let me don't let don't keep let me keep you awake. <laughs> I don't want to have to keep you awake. What well, exactly were you looking at the top screen? Somebody was asking. Oh, I, um, we my top screen is hooked up with Nick, and so Nick can send me messages or questions. Uh, because I'm drawing, I can't see, because I'm drawing, I can't see any of your questions. That's why we have Dustin here helping. But we also, we just um, uh, got this set up to where Nick can send me questions on my big monitor. 
Oh, a Twitch question. See, I've got a new question. Uh -huh. Hey, uh, hey, Aaron Blaze Art. Can you get by without being able to draw humans in the art career world well enough, or is that is that a struggle? Um, well, in the wildlife art market, you don't have to draw humans really. It depends. It really depends on what you're trying to do. As an animator, uh, it's pretty hard not to draw humans. Um, but uh, I would recommend. I would recommend if it's hard. You know what? Life is hard. Drawing is hard. You have to buck up and just push through it. But, um, <laughs> um, but yeah, I think I recommend, you know, you got to learn how to draw humans. It's just, or, or pick a career in art where you just don't draw humans. You know, in, in my animal art career, I never draw humans, but I draw a lot of humans when I'm animating. Let me do this. Let me turn on my onion. Whoops, that's not right. Onion skin. There we go. Actually, somebody asks, uh, uh, can you show us your keyframes real quick? Oh, that's the other thing I wanted to mention. Keyframe? Every drawing that you see right now is a keyframe. I did all of this straight ahead. So for those of you that were watching, for those of you that were watching uh, last week, remember I uh, when I was animating that bunny? I was animating it pose to pose. I picked four specific poses for the whole shot, and then I and I laid them in, and then I kind of connected them with a little bit of animation. What I did here is I animated all of this just scribbling all straight ahead. All right. So now there is going to be in betweens that go in between, but I hit my you know on fours, sixes, and eights every single drawing. And I just went straight ahead. I just, I was feeling the action in my in my head, and I would draw each drawing. And so what that does is it gives you a fluidity to the action um, that the only way you can get is just by animating it straight ahead. And and the other thing that happens is every drawing that you create becomes a key. That is a key drawing. There's no there's it, because it's a unique image. There's no in betweens that lead to it. Or that that it, it is not an in between. It is a key. Every drawing is a key. So if you look at my timeline down below here, all of these drawings that you see, uh, some of them are held on eights, threes, sixes, fours. Every single drawing is a key all the way through this timeline. Here I hit everything on eights, and so if I let this play, you can see that everything lines up. There. <laughs> Do you see it? Mm -hmm. You see the, the food swirl around? But every drawing here is just just a key. I mean, it's, it, it's everything is a key. So, so I got to get back here. Come back here, 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 because I'm trying to get that food to swirl. Ready for another question? Yes, I am. See, this, this was a drawing I did just as a placeholder, but I ended up liking it. So I'm going to keep that there. Go ahead, Dustin. Sorry. No worries. Uh, when did you discover your love for animation? I didn't discover it. Um, well, I did discover it, but I, was, I needed a job is what happened when I was in college. Because I wanted to be a painter. I wanted to be an illustrator for National Geographic. Um, but that didn't work out. So... Um, I found out that Disney was actually going to be coming to my college. I went to Ringling College of Art and Design in 1986 through 1989, and they were looking for people to train as animators. They wanted to find people that could draw really well and then train them as animators. And so I put together a portfolio, and I guess they thought I could draw well enough. And they brought me in, and I thought I might be a background painter. I wasn't sure what I was going to do, but I got together with Glenn Keane, who's a great contemporary animator right now uh, in these days. And he's, he's just an amazing, amazing artist. And lucky for me, he was my mentor. He trained me how to animate. I was in his office every day and he showed me what it was, what it took to, to be an animator. And he lit this fire in me. It, it just inspired me to, to do, to, that's what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. And that was literally exactly 30 years ago. Uh, I finished my internship in July of 1988. 30 years ago, and I never looked back. And so that's how I got into animation. <clears throat> I 
And so through here, I got to tie these down just a little bit. We got another question here. Yeah. Uh, do you like animation effects like water, smoke, things like that? Um, I'm not very good at it. I I, uh, I like character better. Um, I love I love good effects animation when it's done right, obviously. Um, but uh, hold on, I got to think about this. It's gonna swing out. Hold on, let me do something real quick. Um, but I just don't have the patience or the knowledge to do really good effects animation. But I do like it. Uh, could you explain to us really quick the principles of animation? I've heard of squash and stretch, overlap, but what does this mean? Okay, there's no way I can I can quickly explain it. That's a whole course in itself. As a matter of fact, you can get that course <laughs> at my website, creatureartteacher.com. No, but I and, and during the course, literally though, I in the course I go over all the twelve um, fundamentals of animation, and it's not something I can just explain in five minutes. Um, there are there is stretch and squash, which means you know when something moves quick across the screen, it'll stretch out, and or if there's a hard impact, it'll squash. There's overlap, you know, and follow through, which is what I'm doing right now with this little piece of meat. Every time the character moves, that piece of meat follows its action. It's overlapping. Um, there's appeal. There's, uh, there's, well, there's 12 different uh, principles. Uh, all of them contribute in some way to animation being believable and being uh, lifelike. And those are the, the and those are the. Those were the principles that were kind of pioneered by the original nine old men that Walt Disney hired uh, back in the day, back in the 20s and 30s and 40s. And they were the, they were kind of figuring it out as they went. And they figured out these 12 principles that created really dynamic animation. And it looks like uh, Nick has relayed a new YouTube question. Hey, am I going to do a class about drawing big apes? Yes, I'm going to be doing a course, well, not big apes, there's small apes, <laughs> but I'm going to do apes. Yes, I'm going to do a course on apes, uh, primates, basically. All right, so let me play this. I want to make sure that that overlap is working right. Yeah, so and if I have to make little adjustments once I put the in-betweens in, then that'll be fine. But it's kind of working. Right now I'm just looking at that piece of meat overlapping and dangling. <laughs> it's going to be kind of fun seeing it swirl around his head. Yeah. Kind of gross. In a fun way. That is nasty. <laughs> uh, which principle uh, do you think is the most vital? There is no v principle that's more vital than any of them. They all are vital. Um, yeah, it's, it's, I, I can't, I don't know. Timing is a big one. Mm -hmm. Uh, sorry, I got a piece of, um, um, cabbage stuck in my teeth. <laughs> I'm picking my teeth on camera. Um, yeah, they're all, you know, they're all, they're, I can't tell you which one is more important than the other. Squash and stretch is super important if you want it to feel dynamic. And appeal, obviously, you want it to be appealing. Uh, and appeal, the other one too, and just going back, going back to appeal, appeal doesn't mean that it's pretty to look at. Appeal, you can have an ugly villainous character that's appealing. Appeal means do I want to watch it? Is it drawing me in? Is, is, it, is it pulling my attention and holding it? That's appeal, okay? So, uh, but there really is no one that's more important than the other that I can think of. And uh, Nick has a new Twitch question. Hey, if, uh, if I want to be an environment concept artist, do I need to know how to draw anatomy? Mm, you should have, I think you need to have at least a, an understanding because if you're doing environmental and concept design work for film or for animation, you're going to have to show how characters fit in there. A lot of times you need to put them in there for size relationships. You need to see how they're going to be. Um, a lot of times you'll have to show how they integrate with the environment. Uh, so it does help uh, to be able to draw anatomy, human anatomy, or how it, however it, it 
pertains to characters or whatever it is that you might be doing. Now, you, if you practice your drawing with, with anatomical studies along with your concept stuff, your drawing will just get better, which will improve your environment drawing and your anatomy drawing too. So it's really about just becoming the best artist you can become. Uh, is it possible to get feedback from you uh, for your training courses or with the annual membership? No, uh, not right now because we just have too many requests for that. And we I don't personally have the time because of everything else that I'm doing. But we are trying to work out a plan that we'll be able to do that down the road. And then there's another one up here. Is this, have I ever an, and you, from YouTube, have I ever animated with Photoshop? I get that question all the time. I tried once and it was ridiculously complex and non-intuitive and I just gave up on it and just said I'm not I'm not doing it um, it's if you're gonna if you want to animate get the software that's made for animation don't use Photoshop it's not made for animation don't get Adobe animate because that's not made for character animation get a software that's made for character animation even if you just download that really simple pencil free software off the internet that that simple software is still better than trying to animate in Photoshop. It's just too complex and it's and it doesn't play back at correct timing a lot of times and it gets bogged down and it's just it's hard to deal with. It's not made for that. So or get TV paint. You know, I know TV paint is more expensive and it might be cost prohibitive, but at the very least you can get that free the free download of, of pencil and work in that. I'm going to open his mouth here. How we got, how we doing, Dustin? Just for... Oh, hey, have I ever heard any good things about Open 2s from Studio Ghibli? I have not. Not I haven't. It's not that I haven't heard any good. I haven't heard anything. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what. Um, I've, I've heard that, you know, it's going to be available. It's free and all that kind of stuff. But I don't. I haven't heard any. I haven't heard from anybody that's used it. I'm going to open that mouth right there. So here I'm going to put an in-between in. So I've got an extra long question here. Okay. Here we go. Uh, have you seen the trailer for Klaus uh, from SPA Studio? Yes. Uh, they've developed a really amazing technology that gives their film a three-dimensional feel to lighting and shading, yes. just like how you would actually spend time on each frame and paint it with all the nuances of lighting and shading. Do you think this is going to revolutionize the 2D animation industry as a whole, or do you think it's still not enough to compete with 3D? I don't think it's going to revolutionize. I mean, to me, it's still, it's just a look. It's still, it's just a, to me, that's a, that's an artistic choice um, to, to take and go down, and that's, and which is cool. It's great. Um so I don't think it's going to revol revolutionize the 2D market. Uh, what I think is going to revolutionize the 2D market is for the just for the general public to embrace it, and for them to be for the filmmakers to be able to come up with a way that to create animate full 2D animated films that are fully animated. Um, in my in my opinion, my like the Disney style, fully animated, but for less money. And I think there's ways of doing it that, from an from a, a, a an art direction standpoint, that won't cost as much money. I think the the big key is trying to get the the cost of the films down. Um, you know, th this is a business that we're in, and you know, movies are supposed to make money. That's why film you know, that's why film companies make them. That's why Disney makes makes them. They're here to they they want to make money, and so if your films are a little bit of a risk like a 2d film might be which is that's the that's the mentality of the executives 
then to offset that risk, you want that film to not cost as much money. So you're not risking as much money. So that's where I think we need to make, that's what's going to revolutionize the animation industry is to bring the cost down so that there's not a, there's not as much fear to make one. Um, and the trailer for Klaus was done in TV paint, by the way. So that's really cool. Um, what was uh, what was your work ethic like while learning how to animate draw? What did you practice and how many hours did you spend practicing every day? My work ethic is the same work ethic I have now. I love what I do. I absolutely love what I do. And so for me, it's not hard. It's not work. To me, it's fun. I love animating. I love uh, drawing, painting. Uh, and so... I would I was constantly drawing, constantly animating, constantly you know I do it for fun, so um, so for me it's not a matter of having a good work ethic it's just what I do, so if that if that makes sense. And another Facebook question here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Have you ever looked at your previous animation work and thought, ugh, I should have done that better? <laughs> yes, I yes absolutely. There are a few shots. Um, there are some Raja shots in Aladdin where I go, ugh, I wish I would have done that better. But you know what? That's just, that's life. And if you want to uh, illustrate, what program do you recommend? For digital painting and illustration, I'd use Photoshop. You know, I mean, but there's tons of them out there. So personally, I use Photoshop. I love Photoshop. It works great for me. I also use Painter occasionally. But, um, you know, someone else, I'm sure, will get in there and type and say, hey, I think Krita's better or whatever, which is fine. Um, but uh, I personally, for me, I use Photoshop. It works for me, and I enjoy it. Technique is relayed another long, long Twitch question. Hey, Mr. Blaze, I'm currently designing the characters of my thesis film. The thing I, is I feel contaminated in a good way, I guess, by the famous characters I love. So my designs end up looking pretty much like characters that already already exist. Is that normal? And what should I do to avoid that? Yes, it's normal. We're all going to be influenced by different things, and our work will reflect what we're influenced by. That's fine. Given time, those things that influence you, you will make them your own, and you will morph them into something new that's never been seen before. That's how we create our own styles. Our styles are a conglomeration of everything that's influenced us in our life, and we've kind of mixed it all up, and it comes out as our style. You just might not have enough, had enough time yet to find your style yet. And if you want to avoid your stuff looking like other characters find what it is that makes them look like that other character and then do the opposite look at look at other types of design that you're not comfortable with that you might admire and try to try to emulate that and it'll you'll start mixing different styles and everything will come together and create and ultimately you'll create your own style <laughs> Got to get that open. Ready for another question? Yes, sir. Uh, do you have a routine or schedule that you maintain since you work from home? How do you maintain a work and life balance? Um, that's a good question. I once again going back, it's a little bit of a repeat of what uh, um, the last question I just answered. I love what I do, and so for me, it's not uh, it's not work. A lot of times, uh, my office is in my house, and so I, I'll spend a lot of times. Even if I'm sitting watching TV one, you know, at night, sometimes I'll get an idea, and I can just step into my office, you know, and and I can sketch out ideas. And to me, that's not really working. It's just answering inspiration, I guess. Um, now, when I was a bachelor, which was not too long ago. Um, it really, there wasn't that much of an issue as far as balancing that out. But uh, my girlfriend, Vedanta, and her three daughters, they've moved in with me. And we all live together now. And so I'm back to, you know, my kids, my original kids, Dustin and his sister. They've, you know, they've grown and left the house. and, and uh, But now I'm back to having a family again. And so I do have to be, I have to be a little bit self-conscious about how much time I'm spending in my office as opposed to, you know, spending time with the family and making sure that it, um, 
I just, it, it, it's something you feel. You'll feel it if you're doing too much, and the family will feel it too. But for me, it's, there's no problem with me spending too much time. I, I do, I do probably 30 to 40, maybe 50 hours a week in my office, in my studio. Uh, and then the rest of the time I'm out, we're out bike riding, we're out swimming, we're out boating, we're out, you know, doing whatever. Or sketching, you know. One or the other. Yeah. <laughs> Has a TV paint development ever contacted you for some promotion or commercial for TV paint? Uh, yes. There you go. There's my answer. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they have. Like, what kind of uh, stuff would they ask you? Like... Uh, well, right now we're connected, you know, to the, with the website and we promote each other uh, because I love their software so much. So that's one of the things. If you get a membership to my we to my website, CreatureArtTeacher.com, which, by the way, if you get a membership, you have access to everything that's on the site and you get a big discount on the purchase of TV paint. So we have this we have this partnership back and forth on that. Um, and actually, the discount actually is about the same as the cost of being a member. So you get your money back right there. Uh, but I just love the company. They're really good people. I, th I love the software, obviously. I use it all the time. And, um, and so they're very easy to work with. Are you using what would be the vulture's uh, wrist with a few feathers sticking out as if they were a, were a hand? You're, I'm glad you saw that. And thank you for noticing that because I was trying to be very creative. Because a lot of times people will use the primary feathers as fingers. And I don't have the room and I don't want to stylize it so much that he's going to have his arms way out like that. So at the wrist, there are sometimes feathers that stick out. And so because they do have an elbow, you can see where the elbows are. I just went ahead and made the wrist feel like little hands, and he's talking like, like that. And so I use those feathers just as a fake. And uh, I'm glad you picked that up. Thanks for noticing. So he's like he's, he's he's like that. He's pointing at him. How old are uh, the novice girls? They are 10, 11, and 15. You know... You never really can understand a person until you consider things from their point of view. <laughs> there you go. From their point of their view. Point of view. Oh. Oops, there we oh, go. Consider things from their point of view. I gotta hit that pawn. 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 Pop, 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 pop. Ready for another question? Yes, sorry. No worries. Uh, do you have any other piece of advice for any aspiring animators? How often do animation studios get hired through schools, in your opinion? Uh, a lot of a lot of kids do. Um, if you if you know that's one of the main places that studios will get young talent is is through the schools. So we I know Disney hired a lot. Um, what was the first part of the question? Um, do you have any other piece of advice for aspiring uh, animators? That's a broad question, but I mean, you just got to animate a lot. The best piece of advice I can give you is, you know, look at other animators, look at what, what it is that they that they do that you admire. Um, try to emulate that. Look at, you know, I always admired the nine old men at Disney, and I really, Milk Call, Frank Thomas, Ollie Johnston, those are my favorites, and I really tried to emulate what they did. And I'd study it, and I'd animate it a lot. Obviously, I animated a lot because I was that was my job. Uh, and, and the more you do it, the better you get. Um, hey Aaron, did you animate the John Lewis Christmas advertisement, The Bear and the Hare? And if so, how long did it take? Yes, I did. I actually designed all of the characters. Um, and then my friend Dominic Carolla and I, we supervised the animation at his studio, Premise Entertainment, in Orlando, Florida. And then I personally animated the bear and the hare character throughout the commercial. And then the next question from Twitch. What's the next step in this animation you're doing if it was something finished for Disney, for example? Doing clean lines or something like that? Yes, exactly. So what I'm doing here, this is still my scribble pass. I'm trying to get mouth shapes in. And I'm sorry it's taking me so long because I'm talking so much 
I'm not drawing as much as I normally would. Uh, but I'm going through and I'm just getting some mouth shapes here and there and getting some overlap. And then what I would do, I'll give you an example. Let me find a good key drawing. Here's a key right here. I would, I'm going to put a new layer right there. I'm going to knock this back just a little bit. Knock oh, back the, the transparency. Yeah? Really quick. Is uh, membership lifetime or yearly? It's yearly. Can't give you a lifetime membership for the price that we give that the membership is. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's pretty cheap. I mean, if you think about it, you, you get everything that's on the site. You get every course, all the brushes. You get all kinds of stuff. And, uh, and yes, it is it is a yearly. I mean, but, I mean, theoretically, you could get everything, get through everything in a year. Uh, so... Real quick, so I'm going to knock that back. And so my next step would be to go through and tie this down. And what that means is I'm going to go to a smaller brush. And it just, I want to make this nice and pretty. This one's actually fairly tied down already. And I would go through on every drawing and do this next. And then the process after this is going to be to add all of the in-betweens. In all, I'll end up with about, about 180 to 190 finished drawings for this, for this shot. Is the other vulture going to do anything? Yes. He's just going to be kind of staring at him, blinking a couple times. He'll bend down, maybe grab a foot, a bite or two. But he's just sitting there, you know, basically the attitude you see is what he's going to be doing. I think it'll be funny when, like, when he, uh, when the guy talking goes into the skin, <laughs> you just see the other guy's eyes just widen, like, what are you doing? <laughs> Bob, you're playing with your food. Uh, you ever met Mel Blanc? No, I never met Mel Blanc. Never did. And uh, what is the interview process uh, at Disney? The interview process. Um, well, I'm, I can't tell you what it is now because I haven't been there since t for eight years. But I mean, our process when we, I can't imagine it being much different. You know, your portfolio will go through a review board, and uh, which I was a part of. And then we go through, and if your portfolio is picked, then you'd normally get a phone call from our recruiter to talk to you about, you know, a possibility of a job. And then you would come in and meet with key personnel and uh, artists and whatnot. Whatnot. And basically, it's just basically like any other job interview process. And what are the production costs for a 2D animated film? Oh, nowadays, it, well, it depends on the company. I mean, there's companies like Cartoon Saloon in Ireland that are making movies for about $8 million. And they're beautiful films. Uh, but Disney, you know, the last film I made when I, and this is back in 1998 through 2003 uh, or 97, I made Brother Bear and my budget for that movie was $90 million. So, uh, you know, there's a big, there's a big gap in there. So it just, it really depends on the art direction of your film, what you want to do. There's so many corners you can cut uh, in order to save money. Or there's a lot of things you can do artistically that are going to cost money. It just depends on what, you know, like, for instance, you know, the number I'm, of drawings that I'm doing for this, for this piece of animation. Oh, shoot, I drew on the wrong layer, didn't I? Oh, what the heck? What the heck? Um, the number of drawings that it takes is, uh, it, for this shot, maybe, you know, you don't want to spend that much money. And so you'll do it and with, you know, Miyazaki's films, they rarely do full animation. They'll pick certain shots where they'll do it, but most of the times it's fours and sixes and, and it tells the story perfectly fine. You know, you know here, you know, not really it's not fully animated, but you can see the action. From that point of view. 
I mean, listen, you got to rip. And it looks like Nick relayed a new question. Yeah. So let me fix this really quick because I screwed up. I messed up. It looks like he changed his picture, too. <laughs> He's <laughs> Willie Nelson now. <laughs> Did you ever meet one of the nine old men? If so, who? Yes, I've met Ken Harris. I met uh, uh, Ollie Johnson, Frank Thomas, Ward Kimball. I met a whole bunch of them. Um, and they were great. They were really, really great guys. Uh, how much time does a working animator have to complete an animation? It depends on the shot. Some shots are really big. Some shots are really short. I've had shots that have taken me a month to complete. I've had other shots that took me two hours to complete. So it really varies in between. It really depends on the size of the shot. So I'm going to get rid of here, that layer, X, that gets rid of that. And then on here, I'm going to get rid of this all together. Where am I going with this? Where am I going with this? I don't know. Where are you going with this? Where are we going with this? That's a good question. Let's bring this up here. And it's gone. There we go. And let's turn this back up. There we go. Now I'm back on track. I had the wrong layer going. You know, you never really can understand a person until you consider things from their point of view. Okay, I see mean, there. You never can understand a person until you consider things from their point of view. There's my in-between that I didn't finish yet. Point, point. There we go. My talking and trying to animate at the same time is not working out so well. Sorry, guys. No worries. But, uh, got a new question if you're, if you're ready. Yeah. Shoot. All right. Uh, have you ever heard of a, of the animation workshop or animation school in Viborg? Uh, Viborg. Viborg. Not only have I heard of them... I gave the commencement speech there uh, three years ago. Um, yeah, for graduation. So I know I know the animation workshop very well, and I think it's an amazing school. It's in a really Viborg is a really cool city. And uh, but yes, I, I I I've been there. Uh, when was the last time you watched Brother Bear? <laughs> um, I couldn't tell you. I don't know. I don't even own Brother Bear. Isn't that sad? Hmm. Brother oh, Bear. Don't I don't even have it on DVD. Well, you had like a whole pile of copies of it all autographed and everything. I know, and I gave them all away. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even have a copy of my own movie. Uh, it's on Netflix, and I think I have the DVD, and I have the digital version from, uh, from Google Play. Actually, you know, I take it back. When I was in Denmark... At the animation workshop, I found a copy of it in Danish. Oh, really? Yeah, and so I bought a copy. So I do have a copy of it in Danish. <laughs> nice. That's what I recommend. So I was recommending that when uh, when a bird flings the guts at some of them, the other guy's face. That is a good idea. I'm taking that idea. I'm going to use that. Thank you. Whoever gave that to me, who was that? Uh, you know, uh, Gina. Gina? Well, I like that idea. You understand a person until you consider things from their point of view. I mean, listen, you got to really climb inside like this skin and, you know, walk around in it a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> You know, like first he gets hit by the guts, then he's like, really can I <laughs> see he's gonna come out. Consider things from their point of view. I mean, listen, you gotta really climb inside their skin and you know walk around in it a little bit. Walk around in it a little bit. You know, King of the Castle, King of the Castle. You never King really can understand a person until you consider King of the Castle. 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 You do this. You do this. I mean, listen, <laughs> you gotta really climb inside their skin and you know walk around in it a little bit. Yeah, he's gonna have the food hanging out of his mouth through you there know? too. So I gotta get in there and do that as well. So maybe I'll jump ahead and do that because uh, these mouth shapes, I'm probably just gonna fake all of them. I mean, listen. Here we go. Oh, do you like uh, making storyboards? Oh, yeah. I love storyboarding. And also, have you ever took acting classes to improve your animation skills? Yes. I actually get that question a lot. And uh, I took improv and acting classes. Have you 
Hey, are you visiting Ireland anytime soon? Um, not anytime. Well, actually, I take that back. We might be there. Nick uh, and I are trying to possibly do a, I think it's a festival. Nick can, can elaborate on it. Uh, it might be this, this uh, summer coming up. So in about eight or nine months, we might be there. Uh, Nick says, lots of people are asking, oh, <laughs> uh, lots of people are asking what my brush settings on TV paint are. Well, here they are over on the left side. This is, this is just a regular, this is just one of their standard brushes. That's all it is. I haven't done, I haven't done anything specific. If I come over to the side over here, you can see the bank of brushes and it's this one right here in the upper right, that second brush, it's a 2B brush. And all I ever adjust on that is just the size. That's all I adjust. So it's there's really no special setting to it. Nothing too cray cray. No, nothing too cray cray. I think this should stretch a little bit more. Dustin, I think it should stretch a little more. Uh, you, you think it should? Yes. Just stretch just a teeny tiny. Uh-oh, I got a bad gateway. Tell Nick I got a bad gateway. Bad gateway. Bad gateway. Oh, no. Oh, there we go. <laughs> it came back. It's back. We're good. We're good. Ah, oh, shoot. How do you keep shapes uh, consistent throughout your animations? I keep the shapes consistent by using simple shapes. That's the best way to do it. And I make sure, and I'm constantly checking sizes as I go. And uh, do you still get uh, money for all the Disney movies you worked on? No. No, I, I was paid for my, for my time that I that I was there to create them, to create the films that I worked on. But we don't. I don't get. I don't get residuals or anything like that on any, any of my films. Inside us, really inside us, can it? Here we go. Just gonna scribble in. You, you'll see how I just scribble right. Just scribble it. Following the action, the path that he's taking. What? You'll see. The new question? Yeah. All right. Oh, Nick says we are planning a European trip in the spring. So that's when it is. Oh. Thank you, Nick. As you guys can tell, Nick is my savior. He's the best business partner and friend. He's a great friend. He's, he's, he's <laughs> cool. He's, he's, he's cool. cool. He's cool. He's cool. He's <laughs> cool. <laughs> and new, uh, and... <laughs> that was pretty funny. He's cool. He's cool. <laughs> oh, but it uh, looks like he relayed uh, something else. Ah, uh, here we go. In a demo reel, should I show multiple styles, uh, uh, multiple styles and types of animations to show? And first of all, it's not animations; it's animation. There's no S on the end of animation. That's a big personal peeve of mine. Uh, types of animations to show my versatility, or is it better to focus in on something specific? What's better for someone who's tr just trying to break into the industry? Well. You're what you want to shape your reel to whatever studio you're going to, right? So, you know, if I'm if I'm going to try to get into the studio that's making Family Guy, I'm not going to be showing, you know, oh, that's a bad example. If I'm going in, if I'm going in to Disney, <laughs> nice. <laughs> if I'm trying to get into Disney, I'm not going to show a reel of uh, maybe I was working uh, at the studio that's making South Park. I'm not going to show South Park animation. So you want to make sure that you're showing the style that's going to fit them. Now you can show different styles within the umbrella of that style, and that might help. But really, it's 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 finding the style of the studio and then trying to get variety within that style. Hear that? It's wrapped around his head. Who is that? Is that what's that that's character's Patrick name? Patrick from, Spon Pat from Patrick. SpongeBob. Uh, from SpongeBob too. <laughs> 
<laughs> I actually worked you, on you, I was gonna say I, you I worked did a 3D on that. for that and my name is in the credits. Yeah, you worked Although on I that. kind of re- <laughs> like, kind of not a big fan of it. <laughs> like the movie itself is, is was fine. It was just the production behind it was such a pain. I bet. Compared to because it had to do it completely different from the way we normally do things. Yeah. There we go. Is there a way that a student can send you gifts? No money, I mean. Just gifts? Gift. No, I don't need any gifts. Um, yeah, we... I'm not sure... Uh, no, we don't need any gifts. You don't need to do that. A little bit. <laughs> trying to get this do you think 2d animation will make a, a resurgence in feature film yeah i do eventually someone's going to do it again it's never going to be what it was in the 90s ever it'll never be like that again but i do think we'll get we'll get an occasional film every once in a while <laughs> okay, let me play this real quick. You know, you never really can understand a person until you consider things from their point of view. I mean, listen, you got to really climb inside their skin and, you know, walk around in it a little bit. Yeah, that's going to work. You know, I'm just Actually, picturing the, the you, guy that left in this whole scene just a little bit. When he flings, you see his face go... <laughs> like he flinches a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he pops up with the skin, just see him go, like, with his eyes extra wide, like, whoa. Ah, I hate when I do this. What'd you do? I got, got it on the wrong frame. There we go. I don't like that hat. Ready for a new question? Yes. Alright. Um, having a rough time animating a jaguar <laughs> climbing up some stairs uh, with his back towards the camera. Do you have any any advice or reference? Well, I've I've got big cat stuff. Yeah, I, I really study live action. Look, find as much jaguar live action as you can, and get to know how to draw a jaguar as best you can before you start animating it. Really look at how that structure works, and that's really going to help you out. And and study that live action. Um, do I like Chuck Jones? And if so, have I seen his version of the Jungle Book called Mowgli's Brothers? I love Chuck Jones, but no, I've never seen Mowgli's Brothers. And then the other Twitch question I have is, what two char when two characters are interacting in a scene, and both of them are animated by different animators, how do you coordinate the hand placement, eye line? Is that all done in layout, or is, or is there another method? For, well, first of all, in layout... The layout artists are the ones that are dictating where the characters are going to be, but the animators have to ultimately animate the characters. And when they're touching each other, we're still... The, 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 the animator that has the dominant character in the shot will animate first. And then they'll just indicate kind of where the other character is going to be. And then the, the secondary animator will come in and animate his character or her character uh, in accordance with, with what was done with the primary character. And that's how we do it. See if I got this right here. I'm going to play it again. Sorry. You, know, you never really can understand a person until you consider things from their point of view. I mean, listen, you got to really climb inside this. So there. <laughs> right here. Arg. By the way, are you coming to Norway? Um, eventually one day I will go to Norway because I've always wanted to go to Norway. Am I going to Norway anytime soon? No, we don't have any plans, but I would love to go to Norway. Yeah, really. yeah. For the uh, spring tour, which yeah, countries really in Europe are you visiting? Uh, we have to come to Austria. From their point of view. I mean, listen, you got to really... Um, I don't think we're going to Austria. I think it's going to be Spain, Ireland, the UK, well... The, uh, London, we'll probably be going to London, uh, in England, and then uh, yeah, Ireland, Spain, 
I can't remember what else. Tell me, Nick. I think that might be it. There might be Germany in there. I think we might be going to Germany for something. But I can't remember. But stay tuned, because we'll let you know. So I think we're pretty close on this. You never really can understand a person until you consider things from their point of view. I mean, listen, you got to really climb inside their skin. And so what I want to do now is I'm going to go into some of these places where I have these big gaps, like right here, like on this one. And I'm going to start breaking it down so that I can see the animation of that dangly piece of food. You ever watch any uh, cartoon shows on TV? If so, uh, uh, which ones have you seen? Uh, Rick and Morty. Oh, that's good. I mean, I, I watch Family Guy. I like Family Guy. I uh, I don't really watch The Simpsons that much anymore. I um, used to watch them a lot. But... Yeah. Uh, South Park. Uh, yeah, I don't really watch South Park anymore. I don't watch much animated shows anymore. Um, we used to a lot back then. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, Rick and Morty is kind of the the most recent yeah. of the shows. Oh, gee, Rick! <laughs> <laughs> oh, somebody's asking, uh, where exactly in London? I'm not sure yet. Everything's still being planned. Um, Nico but and the Sword of Light London. by Bobby Chu. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what did you say? But where in London? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Um, one, one, there is one thing that I, uh, Nick just reminded me, there's, I've, I've watched the whole entire series, but it's been a while since I've watched it, that's why I forget, but Nico and the Sword of Light, um, which is, I think, a, uh, uh, Amazon, I think it's Amazon, uh, but my friend Bobby Chu, who, uh, produced it and created it, um, Nico and the Sword of Light, it's pretty good, it's really good. How long do you think this shot will take to fully animate? I've got another week on it, probably. Maybe another week and a half. It's going to take to get it all redrawn and getting the drawings all pretty, all in between. It's basically just a, a rough, rough sketch of it. Yeah, this is just a rough. You can see I'm right now, still, I'm just going very. Oops. Very loosey goosey. Loosey goosey. A loosey goosey. Loosey goosey. Let's see here. I've <laughs> va, 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 va. Can you really quickly va, um, you. repeat what you said about uh, Europe and Spain? Va. Va. There we go. Yeah, we're going to be visiting them in the spring. Uh, do you need any voice acting clips for your course? I and I'm sure many of your fans would be happy to send you in something. Uh, right now, no, we're not looking for any clips, but thank you. Uh, do you animate in 12, 24, yeah. or 30 frames yeah. per second? Yeah. 20, why this frame rate? 24 frames per second. I, you, I animate uh, at 24 frames per second because that's what I've animated my entire life in. It's, it's the frame rate that goes through the camera when you're watching a movie on film. Uh, I know everything's digital now, but back in the day when we started, it was all on film. And, that, and the frame rate was 24 frames per second, which is why I animate at 24 frames per second. Have you ever used black wing pencils? And what do yes, you think of them? I love them. I used to animate with them all the time. What is a black wing pencil? Compared it's just to a really pencil? nice graphite pencil. Oh, gotcha. Really fine. Uh, it's just it's got a really nice soft lead, and uh, yeah, it just it it just draws. Hey, it's real loud, loud. Someone's here. Someone's at the door. What time is it? It's two fifteen. That means one of the kids are home from school, maybe. Most likely. Can you do me a favor, Dustin? Oh, well, I guess he, he might be done. Be done. I was going to say, hey, let's put him in my bedroom. There we go.
<laughs> oh, cute little guy. Have you seen Over the Garden Wall? Over the Garden Wall. I don't know if I've seen that or not. I don't think so. It doesn't ring a bell. I was thinking the secret garden when you first said it, but no, I haven't seen Over the Garden Wall. <laughs> I think what I'm going to do here is I'm going to adjust this now. See, this is why I'm adding the... Hey! I heard rumors that they're making a Napoleon Dynamite sequel. No way. A while back. Are you saying that, or is that a question? That's what I'm saying. Oh. Hey, hello, I have a problem that I really need finding it hard to fix. When I'm animating, even if it's on twos, it still looks choppy. Any suggestions? Um, you gotta you got to be really aware of your slow ins and slow outs. Make sure your arcs, you know, be aware of your arcs, be aware of your slow ins and slow outs, and that should start smoothing out your animation. If you watch what I'm doing, um, even though we're sitting, I, I, I purposely staged this in very flat staging so that he's talking, obviously, to this other bird, but uh, when he's in the movement of him, I'm making sure that I keep everything fluid and arcs. If you watch how he moves, everything moves in an arc on the uh, on the screen. And from a two-dimensional standpoint, he's moving around like this. And that, to me, adds fluidity. You know, I'm always using as many arcs as I can. I'm also going to be hitting slow in. So when he hits a pose, he slows into the pose, slows out of the pose, moves in arcs, and that gives you fluidity. If I play this... You know, you'll see everything really moves in an arc. He's stretching out, arcing there. From that point of view. Arc, big arcs oh, there. Listen. You gotta really climb inside the skin and you know walk around in it a little bit. You know, lots of arcs. You never really can understand a person until you consider things from their point of view. I mean, listen, you gotta really climb inside the skin and you know walk around in it a little bit. <laughs> There we go. Yeah. So I'm not drawing really much. I'm, I think I'm. Uh, I think I'm focusing more on questions. I'm really having a hard time talking and uh, drawing today uh, on this part because it usually takes a little bit for what I'm doing today. It takes a little bit more concentration, and so I apologize for that. But uh, hey, can I do a video class on small cats? <laughs> yes, I think I can. That's that's not a bad idea. I'll do that. I've got a I've got a video course on my website on big cats, which is probably why you're asking me to do one on small cats. But a lot of the same same structures and everything apply to small cats. You just got to change those proportions. Meow. Meow. You, know, you okay, meow? I'm okay, meow. All right. Wait, are you saying meow? <laughs> Am I saying meow? So the swinging is slowing down a little bit too much for me in here, so I'm going to adjust that. Straight ahead. This is what I like about this. Straight ahead. Okay, go ahead. All right. Uh, would you consider animating a sea lion in the in a future live stream? It'd be interesting to see you work with a carnivore other than the ones you typically work with. That's interesting. Yeah, why not? Can we see the doggo? The what? The dog. Oh, yeah. You want to see the dog? Let's see. Let me go get him. Let me hit this real quick. I'm going to go get that little bugger. Where'd he go? Uh, hey, come here. Oh, no. Ah, he's all the way upstairs. He's 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 only this big. He's just a tiny little poodle, little toy poodle. And I've got Achilles at my feet right now. My other dog, Achilles heel. Achilles, sit. <laughs> my favorite line of that movie, Hunchback of Notre Dame. I'm free. I'm free. Trips. <laughs> <Dang> <laughs> Remember my sister, sister Austin and I would do that, do that line all the time. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Your sister. My sister. <laughs> my sister. <laughs> I'm covered with mold. 
Vai, sim, sim. Vai, sim, senhor. There we go. So what I'm doing here is I'm adding an in-between because I want to get the the action of this little meaty thing huh. working a little better. Why isn't Dustin, Dustin reading the questions today? Dustin I, is I reading know. the questions. Oh, how would I animate the top the top beak if needed or would you still keep it still? The top beak, just like your top teeth, is attached to the skull so it doesn't move. It moves with the skull. The only thing that moves is the bottom the bottom of the beak. So I would, that's a good question, by the way. I would not animate it. All right, it's hard to multitask while hungover. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we did imbibe a little bit last night. We had a good time. I built a little bar in my backyard, and we've been known to use it lately. Just or a little bit. Or whenever. <laughs> and, uh, and it's not always on a Friday night or on a weekend. It's sometimes right in the middle of the week. And why not? Why not? And so we, we imbibed a little bit last night. Had a good time. And, uh, My girlfriend, Vedanta, she's been... <laughs> while I've been sitting here drawing, she's been out in the yard uh, working. Working off her, I think, her little... Fatigue? Fatigue. <laughs> and uh, how is the timing chart you use for that head shake? Um, it's going to be, it's going to be, uh, the timing chart will be slow ins and slow outs to every drawing. It'll be a slow into it because it's on sixes, I think, that head turn, or it might be on fours. Let me look at that, which is a slow in, slow out, slow in, slow out, slow in. So it'll be cushioned each time it turns its head. I'm sorry. I got to get back to, there I am right here. Get back. Get back to where you want to be. There we go. Sing it, baby. My voice is shot from last night. <laughs> like there was hardly a line, so I ended up singing at least a good seven to eight songs last night. And by the end, I was singing harder and harder songs for my voice to the point where by the end of it, like I went, <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Uh, you never know, really can understand a person until you consider things from their point of view. I mean, listen, you got to really... Yeah, that'll work all right. Once we get all the drawings in there, it'll come together. I can make adjustments later on if, it, if it's not working. You know, you never know, really can understand a person until you consider things from their point of view. I mean, listen, you got to really... Listen, I want to get listen. I mean, listen, listen. Somebody has a, a TV paint uh, issue question. Yeah. Um, hi, I animate with TV paint, uh, but I can't move the frames for some reason. When I first drawn something on a frame, it's locked, so I can't change the timing. Uh, how do I fix that? It's locked, so you can't change the timing. Are you talking about on the timeline, I wonder, if you're talking about that? Maybe. Um, hold on one second. I'm not sure if you if you look if you look down here I'm going to expand this there's little squares on each of the you know uh, drawings and like this square adjusts the timing within between the two drawings that it's in okay where do you click on it again it's a it's a square it's a square I wish I could zoom in there's a little square right on the drawing and then on the bottom Hold on one second. Arg. Gosh. There we go. Then on the bottom, that actually adjusts the whole timing. Like so. See if, um, and, the, and if you don't, if you already know that and it's still not working for you, um, I'm not quite sure what the problem is. But that, sh that should solve it for you. you. You grab those little squares and slide it up and down the line. Hi, Aaron. This is from Twitter. How's the timing chart that you use for that? Head? Oh, I already got that. The timing chart that you use for that head shake. Yeah, so let me show you. I'm going to go back to that really quick. So how's the timing you use for that head shake? <laughs> mm -hmm. 
So let me do this. Yeah, these are all in fours. So I'm only going to have one in between between each drawing. I don't think I'll need more. So it's going to slow into this and then slow into that. Actually, you know what? I'm not going to... Uh, I might do it. I think I'm going to do it on ones, actually. I'm going to end up doing it on ones. And so I'll have a drawing. There'll be three drawings in between each of these on ones. And it's going to look like this. So let's say I have a key and then the next key is this next the next key is this drawing right here and it's going to be let's say this is drawing five and this is drawing nine because these are held on for fours i'm going to have a drawing right in the middle that'll be seven and then six is going to be favored by five and eight is going to be favoring nine so i get a slow out and a slow in on ones that's how it's going to look there you go That's the timing on the head shake. What do you got, Dustin? What do you got, baby? Uh, someone uh, mentioned that uh, about the whole locking issue with the timeline. It says, uh, did you accidentally lock the layer over uh, the left of the timeline? Uh, do you see the, the lock icon activated? Oh, okay. For, for the, the woman that's having the uh, issues of moving things around. Yeah, because there is a little lock up above. And if you have that light on, if you have that turned on, like right now, I can't do anything. I can't. I can't I can't change any timing but if I turn that off then it goes back so there is that little lock right there so make sure that that's turned off too I forgot about that sorry thank you for whoever uh, added to that uh, that would be uh, David T. Nethery hey David Nethery we used to work together at Disney really? and he, yes and he is a TV paint genius David Nethery I'm going out I'm telling the world David Nethery worldwide that t uh, David Nethery is a TV paint genius. Genius. I'm trying to remember if I... Genius. Uh, anyway, I'm going to play this again. because you know, I'm. Never meet David? You no. You really can understand a person until you consider things from their point of view. There's a couple I mean, of funky also, things in there, but... You really climb inside their skin and... You know? They were played hair. <laughs> I really can't understand a person until you consider things from their point of view. I mean, listen, you got to really climb in. Yeah, so, I mean, that's pretty much that. I've got it all roughed out now. I think what I'm going to do now is go through the next step is to be going through and tying everything down. I got, I think I got enough mouth shapes in there to at least get by. And I'm going to hit the nuances as I go uh, moving forward. And uh, hopefully by the end of it, by this time next week or maybe by the next weekend, I'll have this completely done and I'll be able to share it with you guys. So, um, yeah, we've been at it for an hour and a half. Uh, I've got time for another question or two if you want to right. shoot. Um, so let's see here. If you animate on a 24 FPS setting... Uh, but do all the animation on twos, yeah. do you still say it's in 24 FPS, or could it be said it's now on 12 FPS? No. No, 12, for, you're talking about frames. There are two different things. One, it would be 12 drawings per second, but not 12 frames, because if you have something that's at 24 frames per second, that's a constant that never changes. 24 frames are going through the camera or through your computer, 24 frames a second. It doesn't matter if you have a drawing held for twos. It means the two frames are going to go through for e each drawing. So you're going to have 12 drawings for 24 frames. But those are two different ideas. So like if I'm playing something at 12 frames per second, that means only 12 frames are going through the camera at any given time. And, uh, and then, yeah, so if I'm... Uh, which is why I animate uh, at 24 frames per second because I want more. I want to have the ability to put more drawings into the shot, if that makes sense. I think I missed it, but what was your opinion on the animator's survival kit? Oh, I th that's that's a that's a must-have. I think I, I have it somewhere. I don't know where, but that's a that's a must-have. So get it if you have an opportunity. Get it, get it. And if you're asking me if I like it, I love it. Richard Williams is a genius. 
Yeah. After this animation course is done, what other animation course can or will I do? Uh, what more is there to teach? You know what? I'll think about it. Um, I'm always coming up with new things. There's a lot of nuances. I might do something specific on dialogue, mouth shapes, because I get a lot of questions about that. Um, there's a lot of different things. There, I could continue. I could talk about animation, and uh, I could, might do something specifically on animating animals. Um, they're definitely going to be putting together an entire collection, Nick and I, um, and it's going to take me a long time to pull it all together. But it's a, a com we want to try to com create a com complete collection of animal locomotion for animation. So it's going to be four-legged walks, bird flight, bug walks, anything you can think of, uh, the way fish swimming, um, any of those, we're going to try to come up with uh, reference material for animators to, to for that. So that's a big one we want to do. Um, and we're really excited about that. Uh, but anyway, yeah, that's pretty much what we're going to be doing. What would you say is the key to appealing characters in drawing? Once again, you know, if you heard me talking earlier, appeal doesn't necessarily mean cute or pretty or, or attractive. Appeal means, do you want to watch it? Is it drawing your attention? Is it pulling you in? You can have an ugly, villainous monster as an appealing character because it's so interesting and you want to look at it. Like and that's Thanos. the key. What, what's that? Like, like Thanos. Thanos. Yes, <laughs> Thanos, for me, is an extremely appealing character. If you've seen The Avengers, Thanos, to me, is one of the best villains I've ever seen in film because... One of the great marks of a villain, a well-written villain, is that you can understand their point of view. They're not just, I'm going to take over the world and I want to kill people just because I want to do that. That's a horrible villain. And I don't mean horrible. Yes, a villain is supposed to be horrible. That's a horribly written villain. A villain that you understand their point of view, you don't necessarily agree with it, but you can see why they're doing what they're doing. And, and they might be torn up about it, which is even, that's another layer that Thanos has. Um... That, to me, is a really interesting, appealing villain that I want to watch. Now, from a visual standpoint, appeal, it, there's so many different ways to define appeal. Um, and, and from a visual standpoint, a lot of times, you know, one of the biggest things I always talk about is just the number one rule is avoiding evenness in your designs. You know, I always use the example of evenness in music. If music is even, bah, 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 it's boring. You want music that has da 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 ba 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 ba. It's interesting. It's got it's got texture and it's timing. Well, visually, we can create that as well. We can have areas of you know big emptiness and areas in concentrated detail. And the more you can do, create that type of thing within your designs, you're creating visual interest. You're creating visual texture, and that's what you want to try to shoot for. When your when your designs are everything's evenly spaced and it's all basically the same. You have you end up with boring characters that 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 lack appeal. So that for me is one of the big ones. And I remember back then before uh, Avengers was a thing. Your favorite villain was actually the Caesar from yes, Gladiator. from Gladiator. Joaquin Phoenix's character. Oh man, that's a good villain. Oh, yeah. I love that character. He's so evil, and I feel so sorry for him all at the same time. All he ever wanted to be was loved by his dad and, and respected by his father. And he just turned into this horrific, rotten person. And I just, I think he was a great character. I just realized I've, I've got this, the animated frame that I'm, it's like the alien. It's just it's sitting <laughs> on my, <laughs> it's a chest burster. Vulture. <laughs> There's our last frame. Hello. I got any more? Uh, what is the best book about animal anatomy, in your opinion? Oh, man, there's a lot of really good books on animal anatomy. Um, anything by Terrell Whitlatch is fantastic. And a lot of what she does is, is creature design, but her knowledge of anatomy, animal anatomy, is just so incredibly good. Um, I, I would also... I just, I, don't, I actually don't have a lot of specific books on animal anatomy themselves. Uh, a lot of what I... I've gotten through book uh, through library when I was younger at the library I would study that way but in the last 20 years a lot of what I've gotten out is right off the internet um, my bridge is great for looking at animal movement 
Um, and I'm all, I've always referred back to my MyBridge books. Those have always been really, really great. Um, but like I said, Terrell Whitlatch is fantastic. This is one just on Birds of Prey, if you're ever interested. Uh, I don't even know if it's still in print. Uh, if you like Birds of Prey, um, I've got a lot of specifics. But this is one called Birds of Prey. And it's for artists. And so it goes through... Now, this specifically is for um, artists that are wood carvers, but I use this book all the time as a reference. I don't know if they can see it. Can they see it? Or maybe you do over the shot, over the yeah. shoulder. Uh, oh, yeah, let's do that one here, and he'll stand up. So, yeah, this book is just really full of anatomy, um, all kinds of stuff. It's a fantastic book all photographs talking about feather placements um all kinds of great stuff study skins so birds of prey there's there's one for for that uh but i've got all kinds of other books as well um but i don't have any uh, like a specific book that i could recommend just because it's uh there's so many i would really just recommend going through the internet and looking up specifically what you might be looking for um, am I a Game of Thrones fan? Yes, very much so. <laughs> I love Game of Thrones. Um, when did I turn digital? Turn to digital in my career? I turned to digital about 12 years ago. I was directing a movie called King of the Elves at Disney, and I was. Uh, it's going to be a digital film, and I was still designing. I was doing a lot of the initial design work because we didn't have any other other artists on the show yet, and uh, I was still working on paper and pen and watercolor. And I realized, you know what, this is going to be a digital film. I should, and I was having a hard time getting the executives to understand, to see that my little watercolor pen drawings, imagining what they would look like as CG characters, photo reel up on the screen. And so I thought, you know what, I should just get, start working digitally. And so the great thing about working for Disney is um, I said I needed Cintiq and I needed Photoshop uh, and I had it the next day. So that was one of the great things about Disney. Uh, one of the things I missed, <laughs> I miss, if you ask for it, it will show up. And I just started teaching myself Photoshop. And uh, uh, and then whenever I'd have problems, I had a great uh, buddy of mine, Andy Harkness, who is an art director, or was an art director at Disney. He's since left. Uh, he was one of the art directors of Moana. Um, he helped me and taught me, you know, some of the things that I use today. Uh, so I had a lot of great help from guys at Disney, and that's when I did it, 12 years ago. Did you ever see the uh, movie Secret of Kells? If so, yeah. uh, how do you like the stylization? I loved it. Matter of fact, by the same, the same people. I was just looking at this book, Cartoon Saloon, Song of the Sea, same art, same studio, uh, and I loved, I love the style of this film as well. All done in TV paint, by the way. All done in TV paint. So this is a, it's a beautiful film. It was up for an Academy Award when it came out. Secret, uh, uh, the, sorry, the Song of the Sea, not Secret of the Kells. Um, but they, uh, they're they a great studio, and they make films very inexpensively, very smartly, and they have beautiful production value. Uh, between walking, flying, and swimming, what's the hardest to animate? Um, I think they're all difficult, because you, you want to create an illusion that you're, you're creating fake physics, right? So, you know, flying, you have to, a lot of times... Getting, you know, banking and things like that, you have to do it the right way, otherwise it's going to look weird. Um, walking, obviously, there's a lot of mechanics involved, trying to get, you know, the shift of weight and all that kind of stuff. And swimming, it's the same thing. You want to make it feel like you're pushing against a force that you can't see, water, right? So there's a lot of different things that make each one individually uh, difficult on its own. Yeah, and um we got another person here that says, um, talking about the uh, the appeal of characters and when we mentioned about the different villains. Yeah. Um, somebody in here, which I personally agree with, says, my favorite Disney villain is Frollo from uh, Oh yeah. From Hunter's Back of Notre Dame, precisely because of that appeal aspect. Yeah. Yeah, he's, he is a great villain. Um, he's just a creep, though. He's, he is. He really is a creep. And uh, he's a great villain, but he ooh, he's evil. I don't, I don't like him at all. <laughs> you know, let's play this one more time. You never really can understand a person until you consider things from their point of view. 
I mean, listen, you gotta really climb inside the skin and, you know, walk around in it a little bit. <laughs> Nick says, you know, Frollo sucks. My actually, my brother. Uh, here's a little piece of information. My brother Travis was one of the animators of Frollo. Oh, really? Yeah, Kathy Zelinsky. Kathy Zelinsky uh, was the supervising animator of Frollo, and Travis, my brother, worked with her, and he animated Frollo along with her. Yeah. I think another favorite villain of mine would be um, the Scar. Scar, oh, yeah, Scar is great. Yeah. Jeremy Irons is awesome. Just, just awesome. a great voice. <laughs> but, <laughs> Nick says Frollo sucks, but Froyo frozen yogurt is great. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, I think we'll probably wrap it up. And uh, sorry, this was kind of a weird one today. I, I was trying to draw. I hope you guys learned something. Uh, it wasn't quite. Uh, the same as like when I was painting the watercolor. Uh, but I hope you got a little bit, at least I wanted you guys to understand that first phase that I do because everyone is so, when it comes to animation, especially if you're animating in school and you've you got people looking over your shoulder, don't be afraid to do a scribble pass, which, which is what I do here. That scribble pass, really, you can get it out fast and it really is, becomes your roadmap for the good animation that's going to come later. Don't worry about the, the putting bad drawings down. You know you can draw. We all know we can draw. Just get in there, scribble it out, find the action first, and then you can go back and do the next step, which is making pretty drawings. But while you're making the pretty drawings, you don't have to worry about that animation anymore, figuring out that timing because you've already done it. Now you can focus on the look and making it look good. So hopefully that's pretty much the, the lesson I wanted you guys to get out of today. I got the photo. Oh, there he is. <laughs> you got the camera on yep. you? <laughs> good. Uh, that's, this is, uh, this is Max, Maximus. Yeah. Oh, whoa, no. Uh, what the heck? <laughs> Here. Oh, that's fine. I'll hold that and then you get the, you get the thing there. Uh, so Dustin, Dustin dropped the control board. That's uh, fine. It's, oh, it's, it's yeah. So <laughs> I love this new thing that that Nick has set up. So put your shopping carts away. He's reminding me to tell you to put your shopping carts away. Uh, but anyway, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and sign off. I'm kind of rambling now. Really? That was just the stand this time. It wasn't the actual oh. voice. But anyway, I had fun today. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. I know it was really clunky, but uh, it was fun. And we'll be back again on Tuesday. So I want you guys to have a great weekend. Uh, I know I'm going to. Uh, we got family coming in, and uh, there's going to be a lot of partying and fun. Oh, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be a good time. But uh, uh, I hope you guys have a great. I hope you guys had a good day today, and I hope you guys have a great weekend. And uh, go out, and make some art, put some beauty back in the world, be nice to somebody. Put your grocery carts away. Please do uh, it. Please do it. When you're done, don't leave it in the space. Just put it away. Don't it's an sure. extra 20 steps. What the heck? And uh, you'll make a 15-year-old a, a, a little kid working at the grocery store. You'll make their day. And um, uh, But anyway, like I said, I hope you enjoyed this. Remember, I've got that sale going on uh, at my website, creatureartteacher.com. My digital painting course is 45% off today. So check that out. And I'm going to let this play again real quick. I'm going to turn it up so you can hear it a little better. You know, you never really can understand a person until you consider things from their point of view. I mean, listen, you got to really climb inside their skin and, you know, walk around in it a little bit. <laughs> so there you go. You know... You never really can understand a person until you consider things from their point of view. I mean, listen, you got to really climb inside their skin and, you know, walk around in it a little bit. There it is. Next week, or the week after, it's going to be done. So, hope you guys enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. Check out the website. Be good to somebody. Dustin, I love you, buddy. Hey. We'll talk to you later. Cabo Bebop. <laughs>